Okay, here we go. Tuesday, terrible Tuesday, March 9th, 2021. We've got about 45 minutes before market opens. This is going to be our little pre market review. Taking a look here overnight on the futures, we see green everywhere. It's green. It's going to be a green day to open up. Looking at the Dow futures up 85. How about NASDAQ? NASDAQ finally seeing a bid up 288 on the NASDAQ 100. We got S&P showing 36 points up, about 1%. Uh, but that NASDAQ, 2.5%, boy, that's that's uh, that's that's quite a move uh, here pre-market. And then the Russell 2000 up 1.3%, up 28 points. So everything looking good here for equities to start the day. On the uh, energy front, we've got oil slightly lower, 64.98 a barrel down eight cents. Natty gas down one and a half percent. Heating oil slightly green. Gasoline futures slightly green. How about the gold? Gold up one point nine percent. Up thirty two dollars an ounce to seventeen ten. Uh, silver silver up two percent. Uh, copper down two and a half percent, and platinum up one point three. And then on the bond front. A uh, little ease, a little ease, bonds up, interest rates slightly down. And so that's setting the tone for a nice open. Now, on that note, as I go to the S&P 500 futures chart here, just want to kind of put out a little warning here, even though uh, we're going to have a pretty strong open, you know, watch for those pivot points here at about the you know 10 o'clock 9 45 10 o'clock time frame see how they react there up around that r1 r2 uh because you know as you can see here these last several days even though you have these big opens you see a reversal at different points here so just be cautious uh just because she opens up strong uh we're gonna have to see how they react at these various resistance levels uh, with the volatility the way it is right now, things can act, you know, very much turn on a dime. So, uh, even though it looks good here going into the open, uh, you know, keep your radar open, watching those resistance levels. Okay, uh, let's kind of jump in on some pre-market earnings releases and some analyst comments. We'll head on over here to the alert list and. Start off, let's start off with, uh, how about Dick's Sporting Goods? Uh, Dick's Sporting Goods coming out with earnings. Uh, Dick's reporting 243 versus the 221 estimate, about a 10% increase over the estimate. And as we turn on over to the chart, we're seeing Dick's here about 6-7% pre-market down kind of a sell on the news uh, kind of um, action going on here pre-market here's your look out here on the daily uh, Dick's doing very well here over the last quarter or so getting from that low 50s level up into the low 70s so currently around 7120 Dick showing a seven percent decline uh, here pre-market and it was just she was just you know, running up here the last two days into the earnings, uh, almost setting new highs there, uh, new one-month, two-month highs on the Dick Sporting Goods. Okay, uh, recent analyst comments on Dick's was back on the 5th, about four days ago. Uh, Gordon Haslett analyst uh, put a hold on the stock with a price target of 70 so he's pretty much uh, in line there near the end of January Citigroup analyst uh, raising it from neutral to buy with a price target they raised from 66 to 90 
Okay, that was Citigroup at the end of January. Wedbush, the end of January, raised it from neutral to outperform, raised their target to 85. Uh, so Citigroup, Wedbush kind of bullish on the company, but as I said, earnings coming out today. Uh, only about a 10% increase, but overall, Dick's uh, very very reasonably priced around 12 and a half times earnings showing a 13 percent gain on earnings year over year and about 178 percent gain in the last quarter uh, ahead of these results doing about 9.1 billion in sales total income 177 million so dicks here around this 50-day moving average uh, probably a uh, pretty good level um on a valuation standpoint at only 12 and a half times earnings so that's the first one the first earnings uh, result this morning going to move on let's move on to thor industries symbol t h o thor industries uh, company uh, making recreational vehicles uh, so kind of a consumer cyclical play um, you see here on the chart Ahead of these earnings, Thor Industries uh, getting up two new highs uh, there yesterday. Uh, Pre-market showing down about a quarter percent, and the earnings results came in at our survey says. Ah, uh, what? Where are the earnings this morning? Come on, let's bring it on up. Bring it on up. Company came in with second quarter net $132.5 million. Second quarter earnings per share of two thirty eight. Two thirty eight. They put out um, guidance. Uh, saying that their backlog... Is that about ten point eight billion? Uh, they see results in two thousand twenty two catching up with customer demand. Uh, they see industry growth to continue post pandemic, and they see profit growth and strong RV demand uh, is Thor Industries. So, somewhat of a, a, a bullish. Uh, outlook uh, coming in with Thor Industries uh, and the stock pretty much around the flat line here going into the pre-market but uh, right there at highs going back on the chart here just over the last uh, two quarters uh, you see Thor Industries getting up, up almost I don't know 40 percent 50 percent 55 percent roughly over the last uh, five six months on Thor Industries okay so Recreational Vehicle Demand Company uh, likes their outlook. Let's move on. Let's move on to PQ Group. PQ Group coming in with 61 cents versus the 8 cent estimate, almost a 600% gain over street estimates on that one. PQ Group uh, showing a 10% gain here pre-market. 10% uh, gain here pre-market. Uh, going back on to the daily, uh, we see her pretty much in a nice strong uptrend here from November. Getting up from that $11.5 level, almost doubling, almost doubling right now up to the 1948 as she's showing here pre-market. Uh, so earnings there. Uh, a little bit better than expected. Uh, this is one company that... Uh, was in my streak list uh, a few, uh, about, I don't know, about 10, 11 weeks back, uh, having that streak that you can see here back in December, late December, getting up about five, you know, uh, excuse me, 10, 11, 12 days in a row, had a little pullback, gap down, then did it again, a little pullback, kind of a nice channel Got a nice channel, pretty defined channel going on here. Anyway, breaking out of that channel today on those earnings reports, on that earnings report. Okay. Uh, how about next up on the list? Uh, Marinus Pharmaceuticals, symbol MRNS. 
Marinus coming in with results. Uh, we're taking a look here. Pre-market up 1.6% on their results. Let's get the actual number. Uh, we're looking at Marinus came in with a fourth quarter loss, 55 cents. Fourth quarter revenue, 1.5 million. Uh, so it looks like a clinical stage uh, company here. Uh, not much to, to talk about on the fundamental front. Uh, they, they did announce a new CFO, new CFO. Uh, coming in today, uh, they remain on track to submit their NDA for the use of Genaxalone, which uh, treats a deficiency disorder. I don't have the real details on this. Uh, and they also say uh, one of their studies will complete enrollment this week. So... On the back of those earnings, uh, a little bit of update on trial results and companies showing up 1.67 here pre-market is Marinus Pharmaceuticals. Uh, next on the pre-market earnings, uh, Avidel Pharmaceuticals PLC. Avidel, A-V-O-L is the symbol, A-V-O-L. And I do not have any data on this. What's going on here? Hmm. Uh, could be a new issue that I just don't have. Result. Oh, AVDL. Excuse me. AVDL. There we go. Avidel. Avidel is showing up 6% here pre-market. Up to 798 uh, so a nice gain there with their results coming in at uh, fourth quarter loss of a share of 19 cents. Not seeing anything here on the guidance. Kind of a sleeper on this one, but uh, not necessarily here pre-market. Uh, just uh, about 5,000 shares taking that up 6% here pre-market. Avidel Pharmaceuticals. So we'll skip right past that one. Move on to Cantel Medical. Cantel Medical coming in with $0.78 cents versus the $0.49 cent estimate. 61% uh, increase here pre-market. Uh, so not bad results there. Showing that up about 2.5% pre-market. At $75 a share on Cantel Medical. Don't really see anything else worth mentioning. Do see the volume coming in here yesterday, pushing that thing down uh, here ahead of these earnings results. Uh, let's see, fundamentally, company doing about $1.1 in sales, $32 million in earnings, only about 40 million shares trading out there in the float. Sales growth rate over the last year up about 12%. Earnings pretty much mixed over the last three or four quarters uh, with Cantel Medical. A little pricey on its multiple, about 60 times earnings. Uh, and I don't really see anything else worth mentioning there. Let's just check the news, the news wires, see if there's any worth uh, news. Yeah, earnings per share. Second quarter sales, two hundred ninety-four million. So pretty strong financial results for the second quarter. Uh, is Cantel Medical. And that's why she's showing up here pre-market. Now, let's move on to some analyst calls. Analyst calls here pre-market. We're going to go with Clean Harbors, environmental pay, play. Clean Harbors, symbol C-L-H. Clean Harbors. We've got the Needham analyst. The Needham analyst coming out with an upgrade on clean harbors let's see what the needham analyst is saying uh, maintained at buy by needham uh raising their target 
207 from 104. So that's from the current level of around 89. So nice 20% price target raise there by the Needham analyst. We see the stock coming down here over the last uh, couple of hours yesterday. Let's move on out to the daily. Nice move going on here since November. Nice slow steady incline. Uh, reaching just peaking peaking out at new highs here on the clean harbors so need them bullish on the stock this morning raising their price target to 104 stock currently at 89 showing up two and a half percent here pre-market next up we got next up is solid biosciences we have a Barclays analyst coming out with an over overweight rating. Let's pull up the chart here. SLDB. SLDB, solid biosciences, Barclays analyst. Uh, going overweight on this one, they say. So, so far she's showing up for 4.75% here pre-market to 997 uh, let's see if they put a price target on that one from the Barclays analyst. What's he got to say? Barclays, thirteen dollar a share price target, so about a thirty forty percent move from these levels. So up five percent pre market. Barclays seeing thirty forty percent of upside from here. Uh, and they initiated they initiated coverage at overweight out of Barclays on solid biosciences. Uh, let's just kind of take a look at some other things going on with that one. Uh, nice move there from the October period from the four dollar level. So basically a double, say in the last six months. Uh, company a couple months back uh, muscular dystrophy trial could be good news. Um, one analyst said Credit Suisse, Credit Suisse a couple months back, put it to neutral to underperform. They adjusted their price target from seven to two. So Credit Suisse on the opposite side of what the Barclays analyst thinks. But anyway, $13 today was the price target out of Barclays on solid biosciences. Yeah, company's clinical stage, no sales, losing about 98 million, only 1.6 million shares in the float. So really nothing, nothing out there trading. Moving on, pure storage. Deutsche Bank raising it from hold to buy with a price target at 27 on pure storage. Pure storage currently at 2045, showing up about 5% here pre market. See what they got to say specifically. They just they just raise it to buy from hold. I don't see a price target on it. So Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank is positive on the company I'm looking at the news wire here Let's see if I can see anything else uh, collaboration about a week ago with Equinix to deliver physical infrastructure at software speed is the headline the company announced a partnership with IBM here at the beginning of the month to help enterprises manage their hybrid cloud workloads. At the end of February, price target was raised by Morgan Stanley to 28 from 25. So that's about uh, 30 30% higher from here, for 35 40% 40, 40 higher. Credit Suisse raised their price target to 21 from 18 here at the end of February, Raymond James 
They raised it to 30 from 21. KeyBank raised it to 32 from 23. So Pure Storage uh, has uh, a lot of bullish analyst comments. Taking a look at the daily, uh, she, you know, along with tech, took quite a hit, but she's sitting right on that 200 period moving average. So I guess from a valuation standpoint, based on uh, the analyst uh, bullish sentiment, uh, this is probably a pretty good level here at this $20 level, uh, sitting right there. Company doing $1.7 billion in sales, uh, losing about $234 million on earnings. Uh, but they're seeing a uh, uh, year-over-year growth of about 6% on the top line. And on the bottom line, last quarter was a little disappointing. But anyway, I guess from a valuation standpoint, this is pretty much uh, why the analysts are getting bullish on it from here. Good level here at 20 with all those price targets, uh, 30, 30 or better. Uh, pure storage. All right, finally on the analyst list, how about Acadia? Acadia Pharmaceuticals, H.C. Wainwright coming out with a buy with a price target. Moved from 60 to 43. So that's that's a bit of a downgrade, I would say, wouldn't you think? And sure enough, that thing is down 44% here pre-market. Look at that sell-off. So let's see uh, if there's any reasoning put behind that one by the analyst. Uh, uh, companies unlikely to receive FDA for Pima Vasin label expansion from analysts. So looks like uh, an FDA decision. FDA finds undisclosed deficiencies in their NDA. That was put out by Market Watch today. So price targets were cut. Morgan Stanley cut their price target to 50 from 65. Morgan Stanley still says overweight on it, though. So basically, uh, the company just, uh, I guess the FDA finds flaws in the drug application. So it was really just uh, how they filed uh, that it was getting that, but basically cut cuts by a bunch of analysts. Uh, Stifle, Stifle cut to 27 from 65. Needham cut it to 44 from 60. And H.C. Wainwright cutting it to 43 from 60. So just some bad F FDA news there on Acadia. But let's kind of go back out here, kind of see where she's at there on the daily. So she's getting back to levels set back in early 2019. That's ugly. Anyway, 43% decliner here pre-market with Acadia. All right, so that kind of wraps up. Uh, some of the analyst calls here in the morning. Uh, how about I'm gonna switch on over to my streak screens. Let's get to the streak streak the streakers streakers stock stocks making moves here. So here's the streak screen. Uh, CSTR number of days in the streak. CSTR percentage, what that percentage move was in those number of days. VCR was yesterday's volume confirmation rank. Uh, so topping out the list there is Riverview Bank Corp. 15 days up in a row, up 37%. VSB. Now these I'm not going to log, but I just kind of want to show the action here on the charts. Let me see. Let me just check one thing here. What happens if I just send it like that? Let me just see. Is that going to update? Update my thing? One moment. One moment. Bear with me here. Yeah, it's going too slow. Uh, while I got this little thing running here, let me just see what happened over here.
Did this thing log it? Yes, it did. So it did log it. All right, so I guess we can kind of do a couple of these. So Riverview Bank Corp. Riverview Bank Corp up 15 days in a row with a 37% gain. And there's your look on the chart. That's the daily chart. Uh, a lot of volume coming in there, taking that one higher. So that's what we're going to be highlighting here on these next uh, few stocks. We're looking at stocks that are streaking up. Uh, next on the list is Mednax. Mednax, symbol MD. MD showing up 12 days in a row with a 32% gain. Oh, big, big gap down there, back on the 16th. And now she has closed the gap with nothing but accumulation going on there on the daily. Mednax looks ugly on the fundamental front. Uh, company doing 2.2 billion, losing almost 800 million. Pretty ugly across the board there. It's kind of stretch on out, but this, <laughs> with those kind of fundamentals, the stock still managed to catch a bid here through the last year. But anyway, recovering back from, uh, to where she gapped down from there on the 16th. So, as I said, 12 days in a row, up 32%. Let's skip through a couple of these. Let's look for a couple of widely held ones, maybe. How about Discovery? So, Discovery Communications, the Class A and Class K. Up seven days in a row, 31%. So let's pull up uh, Discovery and Media. Media, yeah, you know, look at that strong chart, real strong chart from the beginning of the year. Stock nearly tripling, nearly tripling, but just nothing but accumulation going on with Discovery. These media companies have been some of the stronger ones, uh, stronger groups. Uh, over these last several months for sure. So anyway, Discovery Communications was the next one to talk about there. Let me just make sure I logged that. All right, we did. Uh, what else? Anything else in here? I mean, I have a whole bunch. Uh, in fact, uh, why don't I just uh, give you the snapshot here. You can freeze the screen if you want just to take a look at the streaking stocks at the top of the list. So there's like your top 20 right there. I'm going to make it a special segment. That's more for uh, premium premium viewers. Uh, it'll be a special segment on a regular basis. But here I'm giving you the snapshot. There's your top streakers. Again, CSTR, number of days up in a row. The percentage gain on those moves. VCR's volume confirmation rank yesterday, okay, to whether or not basically confirm or deny that previous day's move. Uh, I find it to be a very effective screen. So anyway, that's your snapshot there. So that, I guess, is going to wrap it up here for the little pre-market um, uh, summary. Uh, we'll just take a look uh, what we covered here, take a little snapshot there also. If I, my computer would just kind of stop hanging on every click. Just have too much stuff running here. Come on, baby. Stop. Stop. Stop hanging. There we go. So there's what we covered here in the pre-market segment. And I'll get this uh, video up posted for a replay. And I'll be back at you here on the next episode here uh, around 1.30, 2 o'clock for any midday comments. And as I said... We're looking very strong here at the open. Uh, green across the board. Uh, just be careful. Be careful. Watch those early pivot levels. Uh, S1, S2, right around that 10 o'clock, 1030 potential reversal zone. Um, anything, anything can kind of pull that back a little bit. But it's looking like uh, the tech stocks and NASDAQ. That's the encouraging sign. That's the confirmation you're kind of getting that uh, uh, those are those are all kind of bouncing off of key levels. Uh, maybe trying to fight back on those 200-day moving averages 
uh, across the board on the text. So, okay, now I'm going to shut up. I'm going to leave it there, and we'll catch you on the next episode.